1 Corinthians chapter 6, to spend our time there. Some interesting things that need to be understood. Uh, we have in a series of, of baptisms. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. But after baptism, what then? So we want to be looking at some things. Uh, we want to look at the subject matter. Uh, the indwelling spirit, what does, the, what does the spirit do for us? That's very important. What does the Holy Spirit do for us? Let's pray. Good. Our Father, Lord in heaven, and hallowed be your name. We're grateful for being in your presence. We're grateful that you have in your plan, and you planned it to reside on the inside of us as believers. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us to aid us, to help us to live the life of faith in your Son. Lord, continue to guide us, continue to help us as we go about doing what you have commanded us. Help us as the people have been sanctified to help others who have not heard the gospel. Help us to live it. Yes. We want to please you, glorify your name. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Some time ago, we were studying how we started out in our Christian walk. The Bible says we started out in faith. How many of you think about it? We have to help other folks. How many of you did any work to earn your salvation? What did you do to earn it? We think we didn't earn it. We received it by faith. God's plan from eternity was that His Son would uh, be sacrificed for our sins. Though he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, uh, the plan of God was executed in time. As a matter of fact, it was executed when they crucified Christ, they put him on the cross. And the Bible says, the apostle to us Gentiles said he died he was upon the cross. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day. He said it was according to the scriptures. It was in God's will that that should happen to his son. Again, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. We all had our beginning in faith. This past Friday night, I received a call that someone was baptized into Christ. Praise the Lord. That person who was baptized into Christ started out in faith. Someone took the confession. <coughs> the person says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And faith was followed through by baptism in water for the forgiveness of sins. At her baptism, uh, she received all that's needed to begin and live the Christian life. What was given as a gift to that person as a believer? Well, the Holy Spirit was given as a gift. Yeah. It was given through faith. Whatever happened in the baptism in the water for the remission of sins, God gave the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why? Did he give the gift of the Holy Spirit? Why did he give you and me the Holy Spirit? Did he give us the Holy Spirit to feel good? Well, it's not It's not a matter of feeling. It's a matter of faith. You have to keep that in mind. I was brought up in a denominational world. It was a matter of feeling. You had to feel. Uh, if, you, if you know God, you have to feel something. Well, I didn't know any better. I was going by that doctrine of the storm. Not biblical but, uh, doctrine of uh, tradition. I poked a holy tradition around me. They were older than I was. And they 
claim to know the Bible. And uh, if you're not careful, you will follow the tradition, not knowing any better. So thank God for the Bible. I, when I saw the Bible, understood the Bible, I said, and the Bible says the just shall live by feeling. No, it did not. No, the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. faith. And then the Bible tells us how faith comes. That's right. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God, right? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So it's in the Word of God. We base our faith on the Word of God. Uh, we base our faith on the promises of God. God is a God of promises. Uh, we have Christ as our Savior by God's promise. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit, God's gift to us by promise. Uh, but we a whole Christian faith is, it was promised by God. So we're going to look this morning at the, uh, excuse me, at the term, the indwelling uh, spirit, the indwelling spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to you, me. Indwells me that he lives within us by faith. Once we, a person understands that, it makes all the difference in life. That's why Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it what? More abundant. This is what he's talking about. The abundant life is life lived in the, in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides on the inside of us. Listen to the Apostle Paul. He, uh, he was writing to the Corinthians in the sixth chapter, but I want, I want you to notice uh, the first chapter. First. We're going to start at the first chapter. First, number one, one and two. I want you to listen to, to this and think about it. the first three verses of the first chapter. First Corinthians, first Corinthians. The first, first Corinthians, the first chapter. And then we're going to move to the sixth chapter. Oh, okay, first chapter. First chapter, first Corinthians. Listen to what Paul says. He is writing to the church. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand uh, the church in Paul's day at this time. Uh, the church was in the homes of what, right. they didn't have a building like this. Buildings didn't come about until years, years later. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning of the Christian faith, it was in the houses. Of, uh, this particular church was in the house of Chloe. Right. All right. You can imagine as the church grew, we had to move beyond the house mm -hmm. and move uh, to the larger quarters. But here's what Paul says. He's writing to the Corinthians, the church at Corinth. He says, let's read together. Paul, Paul called to be an apostle, an apostle of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ through, through the will, will of God, God and Sosthenes, our brother. Now notice verse 2 carefully. Mm -hmm. Unto the church, the church of, of God, God which, which is at Corinth, to them, to them that are sanctified in Christ, in Christ Jesus, Jesus called to be to saints, be saints with all that in every place, every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, Lord both theirs and ours. All right, verse 3. Grace, Grace be unto and you, you and peace, and peace from God our, our Father and from and the Lord, from Jesus, Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. So we as Christians have been given a gift. What should our lives be like? Well, according to the Bible, now the life should be filled with grace and what? Peace. Peace. And peace. Right. <clears throat> it's a gift from God. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice what he says about the church. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He says that, that he's greeting, he's giving, sending greetings to the church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. Notice what he says. He says, to them that are what? Sanctified. <laughs> in Christ Jesus. You see that? Right. Called to be saints. That's the kind of a play on words there. Sanctified uh, is, is a verb there, and saints is a noun. Uh, uh, the, the Greek New Testament, hagios, is the word for uh, the word for saint. Agiazo is the verb, the sanctified. So 
you have the verb and you have the noun. Notice carefully, he says, to them that are sanctified where? In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. All of us who sit here this morning are where? In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. We have been baptized into Christ. Mm -hmm. We are in Christ. Since we're in Christ, uh, what are we called? Christians. Saints. Saints in this passion. And the word saint means holy. holy yes. You're called. You and I are called to be holy. And I like what he says here. He says at verse 2, with all that are in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And he says, both theirs and ours. Isn't that beautiful? Both yeah. theirs and ours. Mm -hmm. So the Christ that the apostles preached mm -hmm. uh, is both theirs and ours. We have a song, uh, Jesus is mine. Do you remember that song in the book? Yeah. He is mine. That's, that's wonderful. Man. We can take it personally that Jesus, that's beautiful. We can take it personally. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of what? Glory divine. Glory divine. Yeah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Now, since we are called saints, keep in mind that the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit that was given to you and me, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit is in the temple of God. Now we have to understand that the temple of God under the new order, the New Testament, is your body and mine. We really have to understand this. If a person, a person understand this, it will be a wholesome living. Yeah. But if you don't understand it, it will it will be a life that is not in peace. Right, not stable. Life. It will be a life that's in, is a is a life that is disturbed. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's disturbed is because uh, a person does not allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in the temple. Amen. So the the, the, the question is: the indwelling Spirit. What does the Spirit do? For us, we're going to look into that. First of all, uh, notice uh, the Bible talks a lot about the Spirit, but when the Bible talks about the gift of God, it puts uh, an adjective before Spirit, and that's why you have what the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's why it's Holy Spirit. All right, the Holy Spirit is given from God. It comes uh, through our obedience to the faith. Gift of God. Think about that. Gift. This is wonderful when you think about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and after the gift is given to us, we are command. His command. Walk in the Spirit. That's a command. Walk in the Spirit. Brother. Yeah. Uh, Brother Matthew, I was just thinking there are many spirits. Many but, spirits. But only one Holy Spirit. That's right. One, you know, from our God. That's why I distinguish the Spirit from God. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. There are spirits many. Mm -hmm. Like there are gods many. Mm -hmm. yes. There is only one Holy Spirit that comes from God. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's given. Gift. Given. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. You, you and I didn't work it out. I didn't work, I didn't work to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was granted to me when I believed and trusted Christ for my salvation. Given. That's why I give I give him the praise for what he excuse me, for what he has done, not what I have done. Alright, let's go to the sixth chapter of uh, now first of all, the time. Uh, let's go to first Peter. Chapter 1. We're going to just look at the subject of sanctification. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to do it. We're going to think about it. I want to think about it. But we have been called to help other, others who uh, have not uh, received the gospel. So you and I are called. Okay. All right. Look at, let's look at the work of this Holy Spirit. Uh, according to Peter. 
Uh, he gives the work of the Holy Spirit. The first chapter of First Peter. First chapter, First Peter. And the first two verses he opened uh, this letter. And listen carefully to what he says. Uh, uh, Peter, I'm going to read it all to you, read the second verse. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Isn't it amazing? What comes from, from God the Father and His Son is grace and peace. Right. This is the beauty of the Christian life. Whenever we meet Christian, whenever we're in the presence of Christian, we should we should recognize that peace. Mm. The Christian is the most peaceful boy. Right. In the world. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the gift of peace <clears throat> comes through the Holy Spirit that has been granted us. Notice verse 2. He says, elect. You and I are the elect. Which means God has chosen you and me. How many of you ch chose God? We used to, in denomination, we used to testify, I chose God. We didn't know anything. Okay? No. It's really something good, probably. What happened? God chose us. Mm -hmm. He listened to the purpose of Jesus coming. Mm -hmm. Luke 19.10. What was the purpose? Jesus gave the purpose for his coming. To save us. He said, I am come. To save you. To do what? To seek you say you know the Lord. Right. Is the purpose. Mm -hmm. To seek. That's the purpose. To and to save. See? Right. To seek and to save. That's his purpose. Mm -hmm. Then that was lost. Right. So it's not that I sought God, God sought me. Right, right. And once we understand that, uh, we understand his grace, we give him the praise. That's why we give him the praise. Because of what he has done. Not what we have done, but what he has done. He, we have been elect, notice what the book said, elect according to, according to what? The full knowledge of God the Father. The full knowledge of God. And that's, that's amazing, and full knowledge of God the Father. Now, look what happened. It all comes from the Father as a gift to us through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied I like Peter's name, be multiplied I like multiplication that you addition is good, but we really have addition and multiplication, well that's a big <laughs> uh, I like that term multiplied All right. Let's think about grace multiplied. What is multiplied according to Peter? To you and me. What is multiplied to you? You get more of something. No, he said what? Oh. He said what? Sorry, you said it. What is it? What is this multiplied according to Peter? What is it? He said, uh, grace and peace. Amen. <laughs> right there. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Multiplied. Isn't that one? So when we, uh, when we observe Christians, and we among Christians, what should be the atmosphere of the Christian? It should be peace. Grace and peace. Yeah. We, we, we should be the most peaceful folk in all the world. <laughs> because, because of what? The Holy Spirit. The because Holy Spirit. Right, well, the Holy Spirit, what? Well, and dwells. Let's mm -hmm. yes, keep it in mind. You have to think, we have to think about it. Keep it in mind. The Holy Spirit indwells us. 
So the indwelling of the Holy Spirit produces what? Peace. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Well, grace, grace there. Peter talks about grace in his second epistle. He says, at the end of the second epistle, <coughs> chapter 3, he says, what? Grow in grace and in the knowledge of what? <coughs> it's always growing in the knowledge of Christ. What, what God's will is in the proclamation of the gospel, Paul states it. What God's intention is, and Paul was striving like he, he, he was striving like a woman with a, having a child. I, I'm not a woman, so I've been around I've been around my wife when she was having a child and when she was in labor. Felt like I was in labor. <laughs> so I can sense what it's like, but I don't know what it's like. Now Paul says, I, I, I strive with the gospel like a woman in travail with birth pains. And why did he strive to preach the gospel? It's, a, it's an amazing thing that uh, insight into the gospel. He says, this is in Galatians, I think, chapter 4. He says, I'm, I'm striving to preach the gospel and to teach the gospel until Christ be formed in you. You remember saying that in the gospel? How many of you believe? Did you see that in the gospel? No, you saw it in the gospel of, according to Paul, did we not? You know where it's from? It's something, it's something we need to really think about. Christ formed in you and me. Right. Christ formed in you and me produce what? Grace and peace. Grace, Grace and peace. peace. Yeah. That's what Peter, Peter is, is saying in our sanctification. We uh, are to become more and more like Christ. This is what it's about. Mm -hmm. Not like ourselves. We're too much like ourselves, right? That's where the problem comes. Uh, we get into ourselves. Well, yes. We are messing. Amen. But think about it. Christ indwells us through the Holy Spirit that was granted. Now another thing we need to understand. Your body and my body, physical body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What happened when we understand that? Look at our society today. See it on the... It's obvious now if we have computer, we have TVs, and so forth, we can see. I'm looking at TV, and uh, I, I, look at, I like to look at the cooking channels, and so forth, see what they're doing. That's all the channels. What do you see? Watch prayer. What do you see? Watch prayer. You see some strange human beings. See men trying to act like women. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see women trying to act like men. That's strange. Mm -hmm. yeah. Strange. Yeah. And they are trying to push it to the society. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. right? And it's dangerous to think about it. Mm -hmm. Our society, we think is a shame what's going on, right? Okay. But think about the unborn generation. Oh, yeah. It's going to be natural to them. Mm -hmm. When they come into the world, it's natural. That's right. That's why they're trying, that's why they're trying to push it. Mm -hmm. So it'll be natural to them. That's right. They think it. They would. They come into the world. They think it's always oh, been. Okay. That's, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's unnatural, according to the uh, the creation of God. God created man, male and female, right? Yes. That's what He did. He didn't create male for male, female for female. He created male and female. Mm. All right. But there, there's a problem in our world. But we need to understand ourselves that Christ lives within us. We want to help other people. We have to help other people to see that. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the message of the gospel. Well, I want you to, let's, let's look now at uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, at this time, the sixth chapter. That's the, that's the thing. I want to think we want to, to become Christ to really become our life. Paul says Christ who is our life. 
and we have to understand that he is our light. I'm going to take two verses and that the remaining of the time for us to think about. Keep in mind, your body and my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's where the Holy Spirit dwells. Think about it. The Holy Spirit, let's say there is something. If the Holy Spirit indwells <coughs> my body, how should I conduct myself in the body? And I tell you what the TV is trying to do in the computers, right? Yeah. Trying to change God's will and His plan mm -hmm. concerning human beings. We should take care of our body. Okay. We should present. All right. Let's look. Apostle Paul's argument in, for those who are sanctified. Now, if you notice anything, if you have learned anything about Corinth, Corinth was a morally wicked city. Uh, you had the temple of, of a god called Aphrodite. Aphrodite was a a sex god. They had a temple to Aphrodite. So what happened there, they said it was a, a town where uh, along the sea, and you had sailors coming into Corinth, and uh, men being, some men being immoral is where they always sought for prostitution. So women at uh, Corinth had in the temple of Aphrodite, they were there, they called them sacred prostitutes, to sell their bodies to the men who were looking for some sexual pleasure. That's Corinth. This is why Paul writes to those at Corinth, and he calls those who are in Christ your sanctified. Now, he has to instruct them. Even though a person has been sanctified, if you're not, if you don't keep up with the instruction that the Holy Spirit gives, you can, you can go back easy. Why? Why can you go back so easy? Because the way we lived in the past, we did it by habit. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, we, we say we, there, we, we, we talk like this, there are good habits and there are bad habits, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. we, all of us who are not sanctified, before we became Christian, we, we had some bad habits. So the Corinthians had bad habits. And some of it was, was in the, at the church, in the church. That's why Paul writes in the Corinthian letter. Uh, some of it was so bad, he said, even the world will do what y'all are doing. There was a man there who had his father's wife. You remember that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There in the church. I keep thinking about it, the church was a house church. Can you imagine? And having his father's wife. And uh, Paul says, no, that should never be. If you understand your sanctification, that's why I had to read the first chapter. He tells those folk, even though they were corrupt, someone was corrupt, he said, you're saints. That's amazing. Huh? If you heard that, if you had heard that for the first time and you know you were immoral, and you heard it, yeah, Paul said, we are saints. And you say, well, wait a minute, I've been instructed how saints should live. You see? So it would strike your mind. Something is wrong with me. That's why Paul writes, he has to instruct the Corinthians, all right? The Corinth was something like our day. Our day is corrupt, morally corrupt. Look at the billboards, look at the signs, look at, look at your TV. What do you see? Moral corruption. What do you see? People being murdered. Called the airline that was shut down by a missile, they claimed. Yeah. Almost 300 people, they called it a murder scene. Right? Yeah. What is the cause of that? Well, it's evil. Mm -hmm. Evil in somebody's heart. It was trying to blame, blame ship. Somebody to get it. The Russians said, I didn't do it. And the other said, I don't know how it got done. It, it got done somehow. Somebody was behind the missile controlling it, right? Yes, right. So you see how the world is uh, corrupt. I just read the paper uh, this morning. I looked at the paper and it says, Saturday, Saturday, I believe, 
Yeah. Somebody was shot with multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. And the picture of the young man is in the paper. Mm -hmm. Sad. This is a sad world. Mm -hmm. It is a world that is amoral and immoral. Both. Amoral yeah. and immoral. You got two things going on in our world today. But God opens up your mind and my mind to see this. And here's what he says to the Corinthians. It's, it's like our day, okay? Okay, Corinth was giving their bodies over to, to the sexual lust. That's what they were doing. Listen to what Paul says. You are, you are a saint. Listen to what he says. Verses uh, 19 and 20. Are you with me? Yeah. Look at verses 19 and 20. He says, what? Six chapters. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. This section actually starts at verse 12, I'm down at verse 19. <clears throat> what? <laughs> know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Verse 20. For ye are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What is Paul saying there at, at verse 20? We have been, we have been purchased with a price. Yeah. What do you say at verse 20? We belong to God. Our spirit belongs to God. As well as our body. Thank you. That's what you see it. Spirit and body. Mm -hmm. okay. Your body and my body belong to God. Your spirit and my spirit belong to God. It's been given. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your spirit that dwells in your body has been given to you. It animates your body. Give it. Right? Your body moves, right? Mm -hmm. In Him we do what? We move. In Him we live. We live. move and have our being. In Him, yeah. we live, move, and have our existence. Paul is saying here, for we are bought, well, I'm up and saying, we are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. What was the price? The blood right. of Christ. The blood of Christ. The death of Christ. Christ died for your sins and, and mine. That's what Paul's argument is in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Christ died for your sins and mine, right? That's the price that was paid. We were bought with a price. But since you and I have been bought with a price, therefore. Somebody said, therefore. What is it there for? <laughs> well, it's there to get our attention. Since we've been bought with a price, what, what, what should we look at? We are bought with a price, therefore. Glorify God. What is that word glorify? What does it mean? What is another word, synonym for glorify? Praise. Glorify. Praise of God. Word we use quite often. On God. H O. H O N O R. Right? On God. Talk about honor. Honor. You are. Honor, honor society, society, honor. We've got to have honor. We talk about that, right? So that when we glorify God, we're bringing Him honor. But notice what the Bible said. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. And then he says, your body and your spirit belong to God. Yes. See that possession? God. Yes. So you and I, since we've been bought with a price, we're not our own. Nope. What does that mean? It means that I cannot take this body as a gift from God and do what I want to do with it. That's right. I have to take this body, which is the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit, and glorify God in my body. Right. 
See, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, stuff going on in blaming God. <laughs> a lot of uh, mental, call it mental illness, which is a misnomer. Mm -hmm. Bodily uh, uh, defamation, yeah. the body, and so forth. They blame God. See, that's what the devil does. Mm -hmm. Your God, you see what your God did for you? He's giving you all this disease. They blame God. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff uh, uh, coming about, these, uh, especially these sexual diseases, come that's about right. because men and women are misusing their bodies. That's right. They build them on a God. So they take their bodies and they do anything they want to do sexually. Drugs and alcohol, too. Mm -hmm. All that go along. Mm -hmm. All of it. All of it. Fried chicken, too. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. See, there's a lot of things that to mention. Yeah. yeah. It's in the Bible. But here in this context, the context that Paul is talking about here is uh, immorality with the, with the temple of God. I like the way the Bible, <laughs> the Bible it put the emphasis on certain things and have right. to stay within the context of Scripture. Now, he talks about the temple. Now let's go back into the context for a few minutes. The Paul, Paul says at verse 15, he says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Notice that. Your bodies are the members of Christ. Mm -hmm. Get that? Yeah. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a holler, a prostitution? God forbid. Mm -hmm. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a holler is one body? Is one body. That's right. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. That's Paul. Yeah. Paul, I'm trying to teach us on radio so forth. Can you really understand? What God has done, and I don't have any time here to go into it, but that verse there, in verse 16, we should stop to think. All right? What? What? Know ye not? He which is joined to a holler, there's one body, and he quotes Genesis. For two saith he shall be one flesh, now notice verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Then he says, he goes back to this sexual immorality that was going on at Corinth. Yeah. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not? That your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. Get it. Now there, there are several words, as a matter of fact, two words for temple. In the Greek New Testament, both words are translated temple. But it has a shade of meaning. I'll put the two words up, up on the board. It's, one is naos and the other is heron. All right? What is the shade of meaning? All right, let's look at it more. The first word, naos, is the temple or the sanctuary. Sanctuary. You remember in the temple, if you remember the picture of the temple, in the temple you had the, what is called the Holy of Holies. Mm. Holy of Holies are where the dwelling place of God, right? Only the high priest could go in the Holy of Holies once a year. Right? And then you had the temple. All right? The, the temple was, was sacred. Iran. All the whole building. Every the whole building. Every square of the building was holy. Holy means it's set apart for God's service. Just like this building here. It's set apart for what? The saints to come together. Right. To give God the praise. That's why I set aside. That's why it's sometimes it's bigger, because <laughs> the family of God is at their own dwelling places. But when we come together as a corporate body, we come to, these, to the building, right? So the building is set apart. 
uh, for the the sacredness of, of a service. Aaron. Neos is the uh, is where the, really the dwelling place of God. Guess what Paul does? He says, your body is an Aos. Why does he use that? It is God indwells you and me. It's very important that we understand this. I tell you what, if you and I don't understand that, we'll get in the flesh so fast. And you see it in the church, you know, flesh. We fight for it. Wait a minute. Somebody had to come in here one day, and I just heard it. Preaching on Syria, they had to come in and stop a fight. Literally. Now, why are they stopping the fight? Christian? Somebody didn't understand that the dwelling place of God was not particularly this building. The dwelling place of God was in our bodies. When you don't understand that, if a person doesn't understand that and doesn't accept that, a person will act in the flesh. That's ugly. Brother Matthew? Yes. I just wanted to say, and it's one spirit. So if we join together with one spirit, mm -hmm. then how can we war amongst ourselves? There it is. Because we are just, we connected to the same one spirit. Right. It's because of it. I believe it's a lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. when, you, when we, you and I understand that our bodies is a sacred, sacred dwelling place of God, Makes all the difference in the world. Amen. It'll make a difference. When our understanding has been what? Enlightened. Enlightened. That's why the Bible talks about an enlightened understanding. We got it? So Paul said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? He said, <laughs> It's, it's beautiful. It's in you. Wherever you and I walk, we should always have the enlightened understanding. You have to have that where I am, my surroundings should be sanctified. You got it? You ever gone in a place where there is people being rowdy and they're carrying on? Right? And you walk into a place, you know how to look at your string? She doesn't belong here. He doesn't belong here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say, that man doesn't belong here. He's not part of us. You and I become what? Uncommon. And they know that you don't belong here. And when you speak in your attitude, they know you don't belong here. Right. And sometimes, actually, what are you doing here? It's something about the Holy Spirit that indwells you makes you be different. Right. Now you go up with you. You don't have to wear no sign. Well, I'm holy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's nonsense. Right. Holiness is going to be produced in you mm -hmm. and from you through That's the Holy right. Spirit that does what? That's right. That's the, well, That's the sign. The indwelling of the Spirit. You don't have to wear no sign. Yeah. Your speech will betray you. There's no other difference. I was sitting in a restaurant, I'll never forget, over at the Bandit Buffet. I was sitting this way, a person come up behind me. I was sitting with another brother. She come up behind me, she said, she said, are you a preacher? Mm -hmm. I looked, I didn't know the lady. She didn't know me. <laughs> but it's amazing. Why she said that? Evidently, she must have seen something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Brother said that, right? Mm -hmm. I've had it happen more than once. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's amazing. And I say, we saw something different. What makes the difference? And I thought, I said, oh, I know what makes the difference. I believe that the Holy Spirit indwells this body. I believe that. And I teach that and I preach that. I believe that the Holy Spirit literally indwells me. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. See, if you don't believe that, 
You will be, guess how you will walk? Carnally. If you believe that, then the Holy Spirit who lives in you, that's why Paul says, walk in the Spirit. You will not fulfill the lesson of the church. Thank you for your undivided attention. I hope we think about it. Yeah. We are holy people and we're going out to help other people right. who haven't heard this message. And they're going to see it as we live among them. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We're so grateful for the information that you've given us this day concerning the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that you have given us. That our bodies become the sacred temple of your dwelling. Help us to realize that as we walk, we may walk in the Spirit. And walk in the Spirit, we glorify the you die. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother